you're visiting with us today and this is the first time you've ever been to Gateway, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for coming back next week. It's a good place to come to. Amen? Uh, you know, a good church is worth driving to. No matter where you came from, we're just glad that you're here. Mothers, we have something special we want to give you at the end of the service. And thank you for those that came and had breakfast with us today. Uh, men, let me just say to you a very hearty thank you for your work, your time. And, uh, you know, that's... And in the work that you put in and turning this back into a sanctuary in about 15 minutes and setting chairs up, that's not an easy task. And food, and in fact, if you're hungry, uh, there's food in the kitchen, I think. And um, I mean, there's some stiff grits. <laughs> Who hates grits? Y'all need to get saved. Well, Proverbs, the 31st chapter. I think that's a good place to go on Mother's Day. The value of a godly mother. Anybody here had a godly mother? Man, I'm so blessed. I don't know about you. I know that not every one of you had a godly mother, and, uh, and you may have beat the odds by even being here and being a Christian, but, uh, or perhaps your mother got saved later on in life, but uh, I was blessed. I was blessed to be able to be raised by a godly mother who taught me some amazing things. I, I learned from my mother uh, through the years a, a number of different things. For example, um, my mother taught me about anticipation. And she would say things to me like, uh, just wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> My mom, uh, she taught me about logic when she would say, uh, because I said so. That's why. Anybody else have a mother that taught you that kind of logic? Um, uh, she taught us about praying, when she would th say things like, uh, you better pray that this comes out the carpet. <laughs> but seriously, I'm so blessed. Let me read something to you. Proverbs, the 31st chapter, verse 28. It says, there are many virtues and capable women in the world. It starts off by saying her children stand up and they bless her and her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Wouldn't that be a tremendous... I, I would hope that all women in this place would want that to be said about you. There are many capable people and virtuous, but you just top them all. You're the... Best. Women, wouldn't you have wanted to wake up this morning and that's what your kids said to you, that's what your husband said to you? There are a lot of capable and virtuous people, but you're better than all of them. Now's a good time for you to lean over and say that. Men, did, never mind. Let me, let, me just, let me just go on. Charm is, decept, is deceptive, but beauty does not last. Amen? As you married a woman because she was beautiful, one day she probably won't be. <laughs> Y'all took that wrong. <laughs> How many of you have ever, I mean, I've had people to go in my office. There's a, there's a picture underneath my desk and people will look at it and say, who are the, who's that? Well, that's Lisa. Well, who's she with? Well, that was her first skinny husband with hair. You know? Uh, I know that she looks at me sometimes and says, this wasn't the deal. We all, we all change. But, but listen to what it says. But a woman who fears the Lord 
will be greatly praised. If you are single and you're looking for a woman, you need to read Proverbs 31 over and over and over and get everything in the right perspective. Okay? Uh, you are a whole lot better off with a woman beautiful on the inside than beautiful on the outside and ugly on the inside. And some of you are saying, mm, I'm not sure I agree with you. But let me just finish. Reward her for all that she has done and let, let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Wow. Looking at women on this from a serious side, mothers play such a vital role in our society. Do you agree with that? Um, a tremendous role. Mothers not only impact their children, they impact their grandchildren, they have an impact on their great-grandchildren. In fact, mothers have an impact when they're gone and the legacy that they have left. Mothers are so important. Paul wrote about the, the, the impact that Timothy's mother and grandmother had on his life. He talked about their mother and, and, and how that uh, Eunice and Lois had affected him. In 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, he said, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that that same faith continues strong in you. It shows the importance of a, of a godly heritage. Mothers, what are you going to leave your kids? What are you going to leave them? What, what do you want to leave your kids? Money? It'll probably mess them up. That's not what they need. Uh, I mean, you, you want to leave them a home? That's probably not what they need. What they need is a godly heritage. That's the only thing that's going to really get them through their, their life. That's the most important thing that you can possibly leave behind is a godly heritage. That's what Paul was talking about when he's referring to Timothy's grandmother and his mother and, and how they impacted his life. Sometimes, as, as moms, you might feel like you didn't do your job well. No, I'm not going to ask you to, to raise your hand. Sometimes you, you just simply feel like a failure. Sometimes you look behind you and, you and you see that, wow, this is not the way I wanted it to be. In, in fact, you, you may have some young children and, and they're, a, what's the best word for me to put it? They're a project. Don't raise your hand, but anybody have some children that's a project? Well, maybe I do want, no. Just, do you understand what I'm saying? They're just a project. It's like, Lord, what did I do wrong that you're trying to test my patience? Doesn't mean that you did something wrong. Life sometimes brings about some very difficult moments, but, but, but children are a work in progress. Just understand that you need to keep praying and never give up because your impact is greater than you possibly even imagine. In fact, the change may come when you're not around. The change may come when, when, when you leave this world, but you keep on praying and you keep on doing the right things and you understand the importance of heritage. And leaving and, and laying that groundwork with, within your life. Our first president, anyone know who it was? George Washington. Here's what he said. The greatest teacher I ever had was my mother. That's a pretty strong statement, isn't it? A man that rose to, to one of the highest, in fact, in our world, in our society, the highest position in the land to be the president of the United States, but to be the first president. The greatest lessons that I ever learned was from my mother, my greatest teacher. President Ronald Reagan said this, from my mother, I learned the value of prayer. 
how to have dreams and believe that I could make them come true. A mother. If you have been a godly mother, and if you have done your part to raise your children in the way of the Lord, then you are a treasure. You're a blessing. Your value is above rubies, as the scripture would say. Thank you. I want to say, I, I, I really, as, as a father and a husband that's married to a godly wife and mother, I see the importance of that. I see that in my children. I, I wish that I could take the credit. But thank God for godly mothers. Thank you for being a godly mother. Why? Because my children are growing up. You know, I'm about, to, I'm about to do the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, and that's perform a wedding for my daughter. I mean, I'm debating between finding a way to get rid of this guy. But I'm going to tell you something that I'm very thankful for. I am very thankful that thousands and thousands of miles away from Wilmington, North Carolina, that there was a godly man and a godly woman that decided to raise their three children as godly parents, that taught their children in the way of the Lord, and had a son that left California and had a dream that he called a dream in church in Royal Rangers that he wanted to go to, uh, to the Naval Academy. He wanted to become an officer. It was his dream and God blessed him and gave him a dream. But as soon as he gets into training in Jacksonville, North Carolina, he looks up because he's been trained by a godly mother, the importance of God in a church. And he looks up on the internet and somehow in God's infinite wisdom, he popped up Gateway Church. I don't even know why. We didn't even have a, a, a website at that time. I don't know how he found, found Gateway Church. And he walked in. And we evaluated him. <laughs> we put Lauren to work. Lauren, find out about this guy. <laughs> you see, you may think that that's, a, that, that that's just kind of frivolous. It's not frivolous. It's, it's, in, it's important. It's the value of a God. Because I also know that there are parents across the nation here that they had the same prayer. Somebody be a godly mother and a godly father and raise a, a, a woman that, that will be godly, that will unite with, with my son, that they can have a godly family. It's important. It's a heritage. It's a heritage. Now, you can't go back and you can't change the, the past, but you can sure change the future. You can sure make a difference down, down the road. Some of you are blessed that your children are so young, or perhaps you haven't even had children, but now is the time for you to make a decision, especially in the world that you and I are living in. It's a sick world. Man, I wish I had a... I wish I had a, a, a picture that I could put on the screen that Lisa took yesterday in the mall. I want it? No, I, I, got, it, I got it memorized. It's it forever, unfortunately, embedded in my mind. It's a guy standing at the makeup counter in the mall. He's got shorts on and hairy legs and high heels. Now I'm going to tell you, you bring that home and you and I are going to have some serious conversation.
But you know what? When I see that picture, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not even so bothered by the person because I realize that behind that person is a mess. There's a mess. There's a breakdown somewhere, somehow, whether it was society, whether it was the influence, whether it was the people that he hung out with, somewhere down the road, the devil has interfered in someone's mind. And, and look, that happens. Even no matter how well you do as a Christian, you, you and I are raising children in a, in a vile world. You gotta hold them as tight as, as you can hold them. You gotta squeeze them as well, why? Because the future of our society depends upon the heritage that you and I lay out before them. Amen. Well, are you serious, Pastor? Oh, I'm dead serious. So goes the church, so goes the world. What happens inside of here makes a difference with what happens out there. Amen. The world. Now, you may totally disagree with this, but, you know, this is my moment. It doesn't matter. That world's so messed up because the church is so messed up. They don't know what's right because we don't know what's right. They don't know which way to go because we don't know which way to go. i tell you where to go. Go back to the grassroots. It's always a good place to go. Go back to truth. Go back to the Word of God. Go back to Proverbs 31, uh, women. If you are a young girl and you want to know what to do with your future, memorize Proverbs 31. There's the secret to a happy life. There is the secret. What, what is the purpose of a godly parent? Listen to, Pro, uh, to Psalm 127, verse 4 and 5. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. I'm a happy person. i got to tell you, the best thing I've ever done, I've done two good things in my life, and that is I convinced Lisa that she couldn't live without me. And God gave us four kids. That's the best thing I've ever done. You know, and, and the enemy, I can't tell you how many times the enemy has tried to tell me something totally different from that. It's the best thing I've done. And, and I realize that, that, that what these four children are is they're, they're arrows that God has put in my quiver that, that I'm responsible to launch them into the future. And when I launch them into the future, I want them to hit their mark and hit the target and be what God wants them to be. So in order for them to hit their target, I've got to be on target. For them to hit their mark, I've got to lead them and direct them. That's what parenting is really all about. As a parent, you, we, we have a very important purpose in the life of our children. You're there to teach them right from wrong. You're there to provide for them, lay a foundation in their life. And most importantly, your job is to lead your child to Christ. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Well, I think that we have to just let them make their own decision. I think you ought to raise your children by them thinking they don't have a decision. There's no other way but Jesus. There's no other way. Why do I want to open up an option for them that has the power to destroy them? I don't, I don't even have to talk about the other option. That's going to be everywhere they go. My job is to talk about the truth. My job is to lead them to Christ. My job is to point them to the solution of their life. The world will take care of trying to pull them in the other direction. It's not my job to give them an option. It's my job to say there's only one way, and that's Jesus, no other way. But in order, order for me to tell them and to teach them that there's no other way, I've got to live my life like there's no other way. See, our children are so confused in the Christian home today because they are receiving conflicting messages. We do and say one thing in church and we act another way out in the world. 
And that they just, just don't quite get it. Proverbs 127 and 3, here's what it says. Children are a heritage from the Lord. The, the word heritage could be translated as a gift. They are, they are a gift. So another way to say it is this. Children are a gift from God. They're a gift from God. What a great privilege it is to have children. Well, one other thing. I believe kids need their parents. How many parents have ever had your kids say, I don't need you? Anybody, anybody ever had? It's all right to, to admit it. I don't need you. <laughs> okay. I expect to have your bags packed in the next five minutes. No, you're not taking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with you. That's my peanut butter. That's my jelly. No, 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 no. What are you doing packing those clothes? Those, I bought those clothes. You don't need me. Give me that cell phone. Oh, daddy. Uh, I can't live without my cell phone. Oh, you do need me since I pay the bill. Since I pay for the food. You, you understand where I'm going with this because some of you have heard this said by your parent. As long as your feet are under my table, you're going to do what I say do. I think that's a good thing. How many of you, how many of you remember the day when you said something to your children and you said, oh no, I am my dad or I am my mom? Or I am my mom. Or I am getting old. <laughs> Whatever it may be. Yeah, we simply need each other. Kids need their parents to nurture them and point them to Christ. It's your job as a mom and a dad to train your children and to bring them up in the way of the Lord. Children... They don't need mom and dad to be their best friends. Quit, quit trying to be your child's friend. If, if you don't hear much I'm saying to you, I've said it so many times. Man, when I see parents who are, who are like buddy buddies with their kids, um, you know, they're, they're going to reach the age one day when they're going to be adults, and then you will enter into another phase with your relationship. But when you, you, when you are raising your children, be their mom, be their dad, don't be their friend. You can't be both. You can't be both. And what they need more than anything else is a parent. They, they, they don't need, they got their friends, and those friends are messing them up. So they need the parents, and that's what we're. We're, we're to be. Remember, teaching your children is a daily thing. It's a lifestyle. And the best thing that you can do for your kids. You know what? The, the best thing that I can do for my kids is to love their mom. The best thing that their mom can do for them is to love their dad. You know, I, I hope my three girls, I, man, I wish I could go back and change. Anybody here like me, you wish you could go back and change some things? Man, I, if I could start all over, I'd, have been a, I'd be a whole lot better. I'm going to be an awesome granddad. I mean, if I live that long. I'm going to be an awesome granddad. Because I, I learned through a lot of mistakes being a parent. That I, you know, that's why... Grandparents are they're always better than they were parents. I mean, my, my, my parents let, they let my kids do things that they would have killed me for. I'm thinking, who are you? Where was this patience when I was a kid? You know? It's the greatest thing. I asked Lisa a question last night, and, and I, I'm going to try to, to land this because I, I really... Today, I'm just kind of talking to you today. And I asked Lisa a question last night. I said, Lisa, what to you, if you could have anything, what do you as a mother really want? She said, well, I mean, I said, just, just write things down. She said, I can tell you. 
I can tell you. And she began to tell me those things that, you know, are from a biblical standpoint. And I began to realize that, that I would know everything I needed to know about you as mothers, how you answered that question. What do you really want as a mother? What do you want? Oh, I want my kids to grow up and make a lot of money. That tells me a little bit about you. Tells me a little bit about where your priorities probably are. I want them to have a nice home, nice cars. I mean, and I understand that you you want your you always want your kids to be better than you, but but that's not the real answer that we really need to have. The real answer is simply, uh, I want my kids to love God. And when I, when I leave this world and I die and I enter into heaven, I want my kids to meet me there. Some of you moms in here today, the greatest mother's gift that you could possibly receive is to have your children actually come and sit with you in church. The greatest gift that some of you as moms could ask for today were to watch your children walk down the aisle and give their heart and life to Jesus would be the greatest Mother's Day gift that you could possibly imagine. And in our world that constantly bombards us with all kinds of things and principles and all of those things, what will stick out in my mind as a, as a parent, and occasionally this happened, it happened a few weeks back, I, we were moving things in all the offices and I came across some, some things came across Lauren's silhouette when she was in kindergarten. But I left it up there. Some of the rest of you found that and some notes. I have some files that I open up sometimes and I begin to read those things. Found a note one day that, or I think Corey found it and she posted it online that Lauren had written Yard marriage y'all today. Lauren had written it to uh, what's those two little girls' names? Mary, Kate, and Ashley Olson. Hey, if you remember when they were really big, well, they wasn't big; they were little, but they were big. And Lauren had written them a letter, and she then said, uh, "Ask them if they were Christians, and if not, she'd lead them to the Lord." <laughs> Oh, <laughs> apparently they never got that letter. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but apparently they were singing a song at that time that said, uh, they spelled it out, B-U-T-T out. And she said, and I don't like that song. <laughs> and she said, and God doesn't either. You know, that's, a, that's one that we'll probably hang on to. Years ago, I, I preached a sermon. And uh, I ended that sermon by saying something like that, that went a little bit along the lines of this. Someday. Now, uh, it wasn't long ago I read that because that... It, it, it went something along the lines of this, that someday all of my tools will be where I left them. <laughs> someday my car will be clean. I won't find petrified McDonald's french fries <laughs> in places that I didn't know they could get. 
Someday, I, when I'm cleaning my car, I, I, I won't have candy that had been dropped and melted into the carpet of my car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But someday, I won't hear the pitter-patter of those little feet running down the hall with Connor's little feet in those pajamas with the, you know what I'm talking about, got the feet in them. Someday, I, I won't hear that little tap and say, I want some Cheetos. <laughs> Someday those little frilly dresses will be gone. And those little curls will be gone. Because no matter what God gives them, they try to change it. <laughs> and now I'm Reach the age to where I realize it's all gone. I watch some of you hold your little babies and you have no idea how quickly the time will pass. You have no idea how quickly your children will grow up and leave you and Mary and go into a world that's out to destroy him. So what do mother, mothers really want? Can I close this by telling all of you? Mothers want you to look them in the eye and say, I love you. What your mother wants from you today is for you to reach out and hug her and don't let go until she does. What your mother wants is you to love God and for you to appreciate the efforts that she's made to teach and train you in the way that you should go. What she really wants is for you to love her God and to serve her God. You see, it doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been, your mother still loves you. That's just a mother. They, they, they could care less of how you've messed up your life. They just want you to get it fixed. So I would suggest to you today that if your mother is still in this world and you can get to her, tell her you love her. Embrace her and hold her and don't let go. Don't let go. Ah, that's childish stuff. Let me tell you something. One day you'll have to let go. And there's some in this room that you know what I'm talking about. And oh, what you would give if you could hug your mother one more time. Oh, what you would do if you had one more opportunity just to say how much you really love her. Don't let, this is a day for moms. It's a day to be thankful. And if you are a mom, it's a day to make a decision to say, you know what? I'm going to change some things in my life and I'm going to be the godly mother that God wants me to be. So that from this day forth, children, don't judge me by what I've been Judge me by who I am and what I'm going to be. Isn't that fair? How many of you have ever been forgiven? 
How many of you have ever received the forgiveness of God? You know what? You, 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 you may be sitting here and you had a sorry mom. Because there's some of those out there. But you may be the one that will change your mother's life. Amen. Regardless of what she's done, you still find her today. And you still hug her. And you still love her. And you still tell her, let her see a godly child. Let her see someone that's trying to do and go in the right direction. Because life will soon pass you by. Brother Tommy, Sister Mary, you had five children, right? They were born yesterday, wasn't they? What's the oldest? How old is she? 57. And the youngest? 48. And they've had to endure one of the hardest things that any parent can do, and that is to watch the promotion of their child into heaven. It's a painful thing. But I know even with a 57-year-old child and a 48 youngest, man, can you believe how time flies? It goes by quickly. Redeem the time and make the best of it that you've got right now. Amen?